Good evening, Sunderland. I'd like to call to order the regularly scheduled select board meeting for May 23rd, and it is 6.30. Um, first, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the minutes from May 16th. Seconded. Motion. You need to motion. Uh, I move to accept the minutes from the last meeting. Okay, second to zero. Okay, so under new business, we'll start with an energy aggregation update. Good evening. I'm Aaron Talbot, as you know, member of the Sunderland Energy Committee, and I'd uh, just like to give you an update on where we stand regarding our electricity aggregation program, which we started almost two years ago now, in August of 2020. So as you probably know, every source, our utility, changes its rates every six months in January and in June. So they're about to change their rates to their summer rates. And uh, just to review, our aggregation rate, which is the default product for Sunderland, provides 25% more renewable energy than what's required of all utility suppliers in the state, which is 20%. So we're getting 45% renewable energy, and Sunderland residents who are part of the aggregation pay 10.292 cents per kilowatt hour. And if you go to the next slide, we have two other products, optional, which you can opt into. It's not the default, but you can switch to it if you want. One is uh, National Wind, coming out of Texas, and the price for that is 9.433 cents per kilowatt hour, hour and it's 100% renewable, all wind power. The drawback is that it comes from Texas, which means that it doesn't feed into our New England grid. It's benefiting someone somewhere, and it's certainly cutting down on greenhouse gas emissions, but we're not actually using that energy. Someone else is. The other optional product is, um, is local. It's a mass class one renewable energy certificates. And that uh, costs 13.134 cents per kilowatt hour. It is 100% renewable, generated here in the region. And it's all. Now, I mentioned that Eversource is about to raise their rates. We go to the next slide, you see what that's going to be. So, starting in June, Eversource's basic service rate, which is only 20% renewable energy, will go up to 15.348 cents per kilowatt hour. That's more expensive than any of the products that we're offering as part of the aggregation. This took us somewhat by surprise because usually in the summer the electricity rates go down. Electricity rates in general more or less track the price of natural gas. And in the heating season, there's competition for natural gas, so the price goes up. It usually comes down in the summer. However, we're living in, as they say, unprecedented times and the price of natural gas is high due to inflation, due to supply irregularities regarding the war in Ukraine. We're shipping liquefied natural gas up to Europe now to entice them to boycott Russian oil and gas. So that's causing price hikes here at home. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the winter. We could see a further hike, maybe up to 18 cents per kilowatt hour. We don't know, but that's certainly within the realm of possibility. However, our prices, the two slides I showed you before, are locked in until the end of next year, at the end of 2023. So if you're not yet part of the aggregation program and you want to join, you go to the next slide and it tells you what to do, how to do that, to sign up, or if you don't want this type of program to opt out, you can visit colonialpowergroup.com slash Sunderland, that's their website. Or you can call 866-485-5858, extension 1. Either way, you're going to want to have a copy of your utility bill in hand because they're going to want to know your account number and um, I think your, your service number as well. And it's very simple to do, to go in or out. The only thing you want to be aware of, if you're currently purchasing your electricity from a, um, a third supplier, not ever source and not an aggregation, you want to make sure that they're not going to charge you a fee to, to switch out of their service. Some of them do, some of them don't. But you want to check on that before you do it. 
So I just wanted to let people know where we're at, that we're, as we had hoped to do, we we're offering Sunderland residents cheaper electricity with a greater amount of renewable energy at a price that's fixed for 41 months. Pretty good deal. So people can sign up for this at any time. There's not just a sign up window. Correct. Anytime they can call that number or visit that website. If they, don't okay. like, if they don't like renewable energy or if they want to pay higher electricity bills, they can opt out of it as well. Okay. Thank right. you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So next up, I guess we'll take our Board of Health update. Who wants to speak? What do you want to know? <laughs> Whatever you want to tell us. Mosquitoes? 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 Let's start with mosquitoes. I guess the program is we discuss not having aerial spraying, but doing ground spraying if it's necessary and we need it in the town. You know, we can go along with that. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, I assume you're going to join the district? Yes. Okay, yep. Yep, that's, fine. that's fine. That was passed to a town meeting. Yep. Passed I, I would, over a town meeting and then ARPA funded two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. I, I would suggest that, you know, people take steps to, to not have stagnant water around. You know, and maybe the town should relook into the drainage ditch issue again. Um, I know when I lived on South Plain Road, sometimes we had tons of mosquitoes down there because it's not draining right there, it makes you off the back. So, you know, maybe that's something the town can look into again. I know they had a, a committee maybe like six or seven years ago, but it kind of went by the wayside. There's a lot of issues involved, a lot of issues. Yeah. No, I think one of the things we were hoping to do in our alternative management plan was um, create some posters or flyers with information about how to protect yourself from mosquito-borne illnesses yeah. and so standing water you know would certainly be one of those and before we produce anything I'm happy to share it with the Board of Health and get get your feedback or comments too Whatever. So, yeah. yeah I think most of the prevention methods are standard methods that everybody uses and everything else yeah so. well, thank you for giving us some form yeah but yeah Thank you, thank you for participating. And, and just for people who may be watching and not knowing why we're talking about this, starting last year, um, the state is requiring municipalities to affirmatively opt out of um, either all spraying activities provided by the state or just aerial or certain types of spraying activities. Um, and you can only do it if you're a low risk regional uh, region which Sunderland is, um, and last year we uh, uh, voted to opt out. We created an alternative management plan, and then the, the state said, well, no, we think you're higher risk this year. They said, we're low risk, so we're trying again. Um, and again, there would not be indiscriminate spraying. There would have to be evidence of an actual case in an animal or a person um, or some other evidence, uh, like a captured mosquito that has it. Um, and then they would come to us and we would have a conversation about how to we, go. We haven't had any issues in the last several years. No, no. Um, I, I noticed, I read one thing where they said that like three years ago they tested the mosquitoes in town. It was negative and so they stopped testing. You know, the last couple of years they haven't done any testing at all. It, we did our own through the Mosquito Control yeah, District okay. last year, oh, yeah. and they didn't find anything. But I think that previously, you're right, a, a couple of years ago, yeah. the state used to go yeah. around and do yeah. that. So. so, anything else you want to know? We're busy doing perp tests and everything else, keeping the groundwater safe. There you go. Good. We all set? Anything else? Yeah. I think, I think we're good. Any questions? Yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Just so you. You all know our Mel Williams is our new member. We just elected Ken Kushai, Bruce Bennett, just so you know who we are. Yeah. Yep. And if you got issues, give us a call. Same. Great. Thank you guys. You all appreciate it. Have a good evening. Have fun. Thank you. Thanks. 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 So
I think another one of the components that, that um, the state's requiring, and I guess I, I had sent the Board of Health a plan, but I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit because there's also the opportunity for public comment and feedback on it, so before any votes are taken. Um, so the, the state requires um, at least three education and outreach components to the plan um, and what we're looking at as I mentioned is development distribution of brochures and handouts so flyers posters that type of thing um, presentations I've reached out to the director of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District to see if he could do either an in-person or virtual presentation about the risks that we could record and then hopefully play on FCAT or at least have a YouTube video available um, posting things on our website and then I also mentioned that you know if there is a risk to health we have our emergency message uh, electronic message sign um, that we could put out and say hey it's gonna be a really active mosquito night um, just be careful try and stay indoors use bug spray that type of stuff now you can do that through the blast call system uh, too, that's right? true yeah um, yeah the reverse nine thank you So I don't know if the select board had any thoughts, comments, suggestions, or you wanted to see if the public had any. Yeah. Um, so, I don't currently, but I'd love to hear if the public yeah. does. So I do see a few people online. Um, if anyone's got any comment, concerns, anything they want to talk about regarding the mosquito opt-out spray, you're welcome to unmute yourself and speak now. This is all school committee. I think we're waiting for the oil tank discussion. Okay. All right. So, you want to vote on this for tonight? Yes. Please. So, I think the motion that was. Would be to proceed with the opt out. Uh, well, I guess the decision is all spraying or just aerial spraying. I think last year we opted out of aerial spraying, which would mean... Yeah, and then targeted out. spraying right. if... Yeah. That's what we talked about last time also, I think. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we vote on the opt-out for the mosquito spraying. And I will second that. So, I'm going to zero. So next up, we got insurance advisory committee discussion. Yes. So um, the I hope I brought did I did okay. So Mass General Law Chapter Thirty Two B Section Three it deals with the purchase of group uh, life, accidental death, health insurance policies. Um, and basically it says that the public authority that can contract, which is the select board, um, should set up an advisory committee um, and then it prescribes who should be on the committee. Uh, it's an eight member committee, seven people, um, my reading of it, and, and I haven't been corrected yet, is that groups of employees will elect somebody or appoint somebody um, to the committee and then the select board would appoint one retiree. So there are seven groups um, and I, I'm, I'm trying to think if we can come up with seven groups of employees in Sunderland um, and off the top of my head I was thinking of um, town office building employees uh, highway employee, just thinking departments, um, library, uh, police union, um, and then school. School, and I wasn't sure if, if because there are teachers and administrators, maybe it made sense, but uh, I'm also wondering if we're going to find a retiree who's not also former school employee 
Um, so I just, I guess I wanted to throw out sort of. So school, could you get to by doing like union, non-union type? Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, and then I don't think that there's anybody in the fire department that's covered by insurance. Um, I don't think there's anybody working enough hours to qualify for, for the benefits. Um, so I, I guess I just wanted to mention it in case you it, there were any glaring omissions in the groups of people or from, from the public um, as far as who else should be included. And then I've also heard from other towns that, that they did not have eight member boards. So um, I think one of the challenges you know, I was thinking about this as well. I think the library director is the only, maybe the only library employee who's benefited. And do we want department heads on this or do we want to avoid department heads? I, I don't know. It's just things that I've been thinking about. And so the purpose of this committee yeah. would be to review our insurance, current insurance offerings, look at potential options for um, different plans and uh, insurance providers and then make a recommendation as to how to move forward so i, I guess i wanted to introduce the topic and get get the yeah, start trying to as far as come up with the eight member yeah the groups groups and then we, i could do the outreach to you know highway who do you want library who do you want to elect or appoint yeah And then you'll have to decide, you know, obviously part of that discussion needs to be, is this a daytime meet, an evening meet? Uh, yeah, I think once the committee's formed, we can figure out when, when they want to meet. Yeah, well, just sometimes that's a limiting factor, right? Yep. You know, I know like energy committee meets during the day, so that's limiting for people who are interested in energy committee, so... And it might have to be some meetings during the day, yeah. some in the evening, and we don't always have full <coughs> participation. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll um, continue work on that, and if anybody has any thoughts or suggestions on, on groups that they want to make sure are represented. Um, I, I was also thinking about elected officials, but I, I think only maybe the clerk is the only one who's elected and works enough hours to, to qualify and so yeah <laughs> I don't yeah know. and then does it have to actually be people who are qualified to receive the insurance I think that's the point okay um, organizations of the employees affected so in my mind that means people who have the option of taking it okay all right so do we have a rough number How many people are employed by the town that do qualify for insurance? That qualify? Or, or, I say, or currently on or our currently insurance. On it. That would give us an idea of how many yes, people can go. I want to say 29. So we're looking at a solid like third of them being on this, almost a third of them being on this group. Well, they don't have to be on the insurance. They have to be able to be okay. on the insurance. So there's, so there's a, a slew of people <coughs> also who would be qualified but aren't taking it because they're getting it through spouses or otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. So that's all I have for insurance. All right. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Um, yes. I will say that we do have a couple of names from the school of people who would volunteer already. And I don't know if you want to, again, disaggregate by like, Unit A, B, C, union, non-union, if there's any differences there, but they've already expressed interest um, to participate. Yeah. Oh, that's that's right, because there are two unions, right? So there might, yeah. Okay. Well, one thought, and I'm just throwing this out there, is we might want to figure out, you know, it, it, within each of these groups, how many people are affected. And if it turns out that some of these groups only have one person affected and the school has, you know, 30 people affected, we might want to weigh, weigh how many seats each group gets based on that. Um, partially also because if we're looking for eight people, we may end up having a hard time finding seven other people that aren't 
<laughs> you know, that want to do this that aren't in the school. So that's a thought. I'm just taking notes. Okay. So I guess next we will talk about the renewal of the mowing contract. Yes. So um, going to do a mea culpa. Um, last year, or last time the contract was signed, we moved from a fiscal year contract to a calendar year contract because it aligned better with mowing season. Um, and forgot but we needed to renew the mowing contract in December um, so before this season ends I wanted to uh, and, and thankfully the contractor has been willing to continue the arrangement but um, wanted to make it official um, I have not received any concerns or complaints about the job that was done last year um, very happy with the the service and and the price and um, so we had signed a we had bid a three-year contract, signing the first year of the contract with two options to extend it. So this would just be a vote to extend for the second year of the mowing contract. Um, and that's with Ahern's Landscaping. Okay. So, I should disclose it now? Okay, yeah. so for full disclosure, um, Greater than 35 years ago, I was married to Mr. Ahern, but I currently have no financial interest in any of his business except no payments from him. So I will entertain a motion that we accept the contract. I move that we renew the mowing contract. Okay, and I second it to zero. Okay. I think this is the, the moment that our audience has been waiting for. There we and go. And I will just, rem I think the school committee has a quorum, right? There are four of you. Um, and that's a quorum. So I would just, just remind the school committee members that there's a quorum press. <laughs> um, okay. So should I, can I introduce the Yes, topic? please do. Um, so I guess May 3rd, I think, there was a meeting at the school, um, a joint meeting of the school committee and the select board. And uh, there were a couple things discussed, including the oil tank and some of the repairs that are necessary um, and the the school sent over uh, some additional information um, basically the tank does not have a remote monitor on it and so my understanding and i think this is uh, maybe i'll ask darius just to avoid anything but <laughs> anybody who's comfortable answering this uh, my understanding is that it you, you check the levels right now with literally a dipstick to check it and so this would allow someone not to have to go outside in sub-zero weather or whatever or sweltering hot weather to check the oil tank it would let people know the levels and when new oil would need to be ordered um, and my understanding is that the the tank I think is is 35 years old but the monitor would would be able to be moved to a new tank if a new tank was purchased in the future. So it would not be a, a sunk cost. Um, so that would be about $9,000. Then there's $3,000 for spill protection. Um, and my understanding of that is it's basically a pad that goes under the oil tank um, in case there is a leak so that it doesn't leach directly into the ground. It can help keep it contained um, until a permanent solution can be found. Um, and then uh, 
$10,000 would be to study the or create a, a plan to replace the oil tank and looking at an above ground oil tank, perhaps a smaller sized oil tank. Um, and again, um, it's reaching probably the end of its life. And so it's better to replace it uh, before <laughs> something tragic happens. So did I think I, I so and, and by the way, this is part of a larger plan. This is the first step. And then I think what I would suggest is that once we have the plan and we know that the remote sensor is installed, um, the, we don't have to worry about it spilling and, and causing an environmental issue. Once the study comes back, then we make a decision about how to move forward on a replacement of the tank. Peter? Yes. Yeah, the only point to be Darius, you're kind of cutting in and out for us. I don't know if anybody else, everybody else is okay. No, not okay. Can, can you hear me? I think so. All right. Um, no, still not. No. Is this on? Because I swore that just made a no. beepy noise. Okay. Oh, I think he's going to rejoin. I probably said something wrong about spill protection. Jessica, were you able to hear him clearly? No, I wasn't. Okay, all right, thank you. And just to clarify, the new tank monitor is not just about not knowing the level, it's also about spill protection, about knowing when there's a leak because the monitor will detect that. Is that, is that correct? I don't, I think it would, no, I don't think it would detect it directly. I think they would see a more dramatic reduction in the okay. amount of oil in the tank, and so they'd probably think that something that, that would alert them. But I don't know that there would actually be like an alarm. Okay, but I could be. So it, it's wrong. The, the the leak protection derives from the ability to check more accurately and more regularly the levels. Okay, that that makes sense. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, do we, do we want to do select board town? Administrator updates and give Darius a minute to sure. come back. Okay. I think he, I mean, I'm hoping that's his plan is to come back. Let's see if he can get a better connection. Um, we're going to give him a few minutes to see if Darius joins again. And we'll just go through, start our select board updates until we hear him pop on. So, Nathaniel, do you have any updates? Uh, I do not. Do you have any updates? I do not have anything this week. Wonderful. So, Jeff, how about some town administrator updates? Um, just two quick things. It looks like Darius is back. Or okay. Or his kid. Um, uh, one is this Friday, it, the m return of the Memorial Day Parade in Sunderland. Uh, 6 p.m. here at 12 School Street is where we're starting off. Parading down South Main Street to Riverside Cemetery um, for the ceremony. And then on the way back, um, the one thing is in case there is a weather issue um do you does the select board want to i guess in the past they've uh, assigned one person to be the contact for um jim ewan to get in touch with to say hey who wants to make the call <laughs> that we're going inside um or i can do that but um He's pro you're probably going to be his easiest person to get a hold of, right? Because you probably work during the day. Yeah. No, that would be. That would I be work the during thing. the day. Okay. Yep. If you don't mind, I Not think you're all. the probably yep. the easiest person for him to get a hold of. Excellent. Then I will do that. Um, and then the other thing is, I, I spoke with uh, the executive director at 
Rural Development Inc. that's doing Sanderson Place, and they had mentioned that um, they had gotten a lot fewer applications from Sunderland residents, uh, Sunderland seniors, for the affordable senior housing complex. And there's still about two months left to apply before the deadline, um, I believe, one or two months. And But they wanted to make sure that, that people were aware that there are two information sessions, um, one uh, this Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, in Turner's Falls at the um, Housing and Redevelopment Authority office, which is 241 Miller's Falls Road. And then uh, June 6th uh, at 10.30 a.m. at the Sunderland Public Library. Um, information's on our website, information's on the Franklin County Housing and Redevelopment Authority website, fcrha.org. But feel free to call us if you have questions and, and please apply. Um, there are limited slots, uh, a se totally separate lottery for Sunderland residents. So um, even if you're not sure if you're eligible, I think it's a good idea to apply, get your name in, and let them tell you that yeah. you're not. I agree. It's it's worth applying for and anyone who's on the fence about it fill out that application and get it in anything else nope I think Darius. all right so it looks like Darius is back now hopefully we could hear him this time is that better oh much good sorry about that uh, I was only going to correct Greg that the leak protection system is not to protect the leaking of the tank that is to protect um, spills occurring during tank fill-up. You're supposed to have basically kind of a funnel contraption that if there's a, a, a leak when the, the, the delivery system is disengaged from the tank and you have a spill, there's nothing there to, to catch that spill before it goes into the ground. And so basically you'd be creating a, a small funnel area around the, um, around the fill-up spot for that. All right, and then that's Thank not you. something that would be transferable to a new tank, obviously, if we were putting in an above-ground tank. Correct. Okay. So, it, um, so there's about $22,000 for the monitor, the spill protection, and um, the planning for tank replacement. Um, which would, with the other spending previously approved, put a balance of about $85,000 on our first tranche of ARPA funds, and we expect the second tranche of about half a million dollars to come uh, sometime in the next month. So, it's just a question. It's not that... I have anything just out of curiosity if we didn't have this ARPA money right now where would we be getting the money for this this would probably be um, more strongly advocated for in the capital plan would that be correct Darius is that what you think would we I'd probably ask you to put it so this emergency uh, gauge being put on, we try to find what you had for free cash, what the school had for free cash, and then I put on the warrant for next year. Okay. I mean, that's how the school would approach it. There's no way for the, you know, that kind of cost for the school to pick up with its annual budget. Yeah. So we'd be coming to the town for help. Yeah, no, it's just a curiosity thing. You know, we're fortunate having this ARPA money right now that we can do things like this with. Yep. And this has been on our capital plan list for years, and it's just now, you know, when we got into uh, replacing the boiler system, you know, we took a longer look at what's going on here, and, um, you know, in this year, the cathodic protection failed, and it's in the December test, which basically means that's the, <clears throat> that seals like there's a wall inside, the, there's a double wall inside the tank. 
Um, so with that failing just means that, you know, the end is coming sooner. And so it's kind of moved it up, um, moved up the, the priority list from where it's been kind of, you know, if we can find money to, we better need to find money now for this. Anyone else have any comments? Anything they'd like to talk about regarding the oil tank replacement? I just got one. Yes. I'm just reviewing the notes, and it does say that $9,000 is for a gauge and a leak detection system. So there, there must be some means that, of, that it would detect leaks rather than just noticing a, a drop. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like Greg saw the same thing. I'm sorry? Uh, Mr. Groshock was mentioning the same thing. Oh, okay. Um. So at this point, um, the select board can uh, uh, vote, vote to, to approve, approve at ARPA, or if you want to take time to consider it more. So, do we know how soon this work can be started? I mean, this will... Sure, the, 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 the monitoring system we, we'd order right away. Um, and, you know, I think that's probably... Oh, I don't think we're sure if you remember Jeff saying it, cause my, my audio was bad too, but you know, that monitoring system will also let us know if there's a leak. You know yeah. what I mean? And so it's, it's kind of a double, it's a double, it's a double importance. Now that we have an older tank, we want to, if we have a leak, we want to know immediately um, so that we can take a, um, emergency measures before we have an environmental disaster. Um, so I think, you know, if that would happen right away. If we get approval for the engineering study, we'd go out. put out get quotes for um, someone to do that study and begin putting that together. Um, the way I've kind of written this up is that basically, you know, I'd like to have a plan in place for budget season of next year. Yeah. That's kind of for the tank removal and putting in a new above ground tank is possibly a summer project for next year. Um, but in meanwhile, we put in kind of the monitoring system to, um, you know, make sure that, you know, you know, we're not kind of uh, blindly going forward here. And then, I mean, that, that's the most important. We can get around, I spelled out the spill protection for 3,000 because it's been recommended. Um, and I have to put that in front of you, you know, whether or not, you know, you want to fund that, um, you know, spill protection for basically being, <laughs> will be hooked up for, you know, maybe, you know, five refills of the tank or, um, you know, in such, it's, you know, it's a basically a risk reward on that, you know, that just has to be made. Um, and then I also talked about if this is going to take multiple years um, to get funded, then we should look at replacing the cathartic protection, which is that seal between the tank and the outer wall um, before the ground. Um, you know, right now it's, it, you know, it's, it's failed, but it doesn't, we don't have a leak. Um, but if it's going to take multiple years, then we're, you know, we're, we're raising our risk level. And so I just wanted to put that price out there as well. Just to clarify on the spill protection, that's only for when they're filling up the tank. And would, would I be safe in saying that the, the risk of spill when filling up the tank hasn't changed over the 34 years that the tank has been there? But that's so yeah, the, the, the 3,000 for the spill protection, there has no, there has been no, you're right. We've been doing it for 30 years. Um, the hookup is the, um, because of the type of tank, we actually have to use smaller tankers to fill it up rather than buying in, in large bulk from a tractor trailer sized tanker. I don't know what the different size tankers are called, but we basically use what comes in a home delivery truck. So, you know, the same risk you have in a home delivery. So it, it is it is minimal, but it is something that was recommended um, that's been on our capital list for a while. So it's there. Um, and so, uh, Again, I, I, one could argue that it doesn't need to be done at this time and we've taken our advisement and because we're replacing the tank, we're not gonna make the investment at this time, but. Um, 
Yeah. We didn't share that with you, and something goes wrong, you would say, why didn't you share that with me? Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those weird things where you deal with right. this, kind of, this kind of issue. You just got to know all the facts and make the best decisions with it. Also, in terms of liability, if the oil company spilled when they were delivering it, I'm not entirely sure that the town would be liable for that anyways. So not, not that I'm like, oh yeah, you know, let them spill, but just when we're taking into consideration the risk, is that a risk of, on our end, or is it just the environmental risk, not a financial risk to the town? Yeah, I, I could also see, you know, if spill protection is legally required, we don't have it, then yeah, we'd be on the hook. Um, and then it's also the the cost of an attorney to actually <laughs> go after the right. company. And is get it really worth the 3000 Yeah. yeah. Um, That's a good question, yeah. So, and then just another, you know, and again, just questions. Um, are you doing anything to like try to mitigate the potential, knowing that the cathodic um, didn't pass, like by not having the tank totally full to minimize if there was a leak, the potential size of the leak? You know, do you have like, you're only keeping it, you know, a third full, maximum, half full, or is it just getting filled? It's getting filled, but we can't fill it completely with one tanker. So we've been kind of buying gallons at a time. Um, I think Bill said at our meeting that he hasn't been filling it all the way, but that's more because of budget reasons rather than, you know, paying for the, we're not paying for the, the get with the oil prices now, right. um, you know, going up. Um, although we're in a locked plan, so that's not directly true within that. We're not paying whatever the homeowner's paying right now on the new the higher rate. Um, the other side is we can't also we can't drain the tank all the way to the bottom because the way the siphon works in that tank is you have to have a certain yeah under, I forget how many hundreds of gallons you need to have in order to, not to lose that right so um, you know I can ask Bill you know we can certainly tell him that it's a big tank you know, it's a ten thousand gallon tank you know we're talking about replacing it with a five thousand above five thousand gallon above ground and just refill it more often. Um, and, you know, obviously um, efficiency is going to be up for the new boilers as well. So, you know, have as much tank, uh, that large of a tank is probably not going to be. Now, where did the 5,000 tank size come from? Because um, I, I thought he had said they used roughly 16,000 gallons in the last year. That's only like three, you know, barely over three fill-ups at a 5,000 tank. Yeah. That's basically, again, we'll get that through the, you know, the engineering plan, but, you know, if you look at the stage two and the little write-up I did, you yeah. know, they were talking about the size of the tank um, yeah. and, you know, getting prices on, um, you know, basically above ground 5,000 um, tank is, you know, still over $100,000. So I think it's also price point as well. Right. Um, well, no, the, I was just wondering if a 3,000 gallon tank is enough of a price difference and you know all you're really looking at is more fill-ups per year it might be worth finding out what the the, the, the maximum amount that the trucks can bring already because if they're only able to bring three thousand already then three thousand gallon tank would make right. sense. so it's a good those are good questions i'll try to get those for you as part of the proposal of what size tank we, we uh, excuse me if we um propose Overall. Yeah, um, but that'll know, be part of the study. I'm yeah. sure they'll come up with a couple different size options. Right. Sorry about that. Um, the issue with um, the issue with the larger way you might want a larger tank is when you bid oil prices, they're going to want a, a, a larger fill up because they're going to want to bring a larger tank there so they make less trips. If we run the school off, of, you know, small tankers like a home bidding becomes a problem and we've already had conversations about that that when people bid our oil and then they showed up to deliver they were very agitated the fact that we didn't have the commercial hookup for the big tankers mm -hmm. you know so um, that is something that eventually is going to catch up to us um, I think they, they felt they went through with the contract and such but they were saying like they're making a note of that um, moving forward. So eventually we want to be able to get the commercial hookup so that we can bring in an 18 wheeler, fill it up to the max and then get a lower price. So we don't have a less delivery fee yep. um, each time it fills up. So, but I'll get the, we'll, we'll find out yeah. 
You know, with the 3,000 tank, 5,000 tank, 8,000 tank, I don't know the different sizes. But. Right. Yeah, the, you got to find that sweet spot where the cost of the tank versus the cost of the oil all becomes right. beneficial. What is our pace of consumption through the winter months? You know, yeah. how often is that thing have to be refilled? And I bet I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, from where I'm sitting, if we can avoid, if we, if we can get this project moving and we can avoid having to spend $20,000 on the cathodic protection replacement and $3,000 on the spill protection because it's going to be done soon enough that we feel that we don't need to do those things, $23,000 is, you know, 15% of the cost of the, the project going forward. Um, I'd love to see us not have to spend $23,000 that we're not going to see back because those are both expenses that are only going to matter for a year and a half or however long it takes for us to complete the project. Um, so. I agree completely. If I was in your position, I would move to put the new tank monitor on and start the engineering yeah. and get this thing moving forward. That would be what I would want to put on, yeah. For 19000 Yeah. So, will there be any, you know, the engineering study in the in installation of the monitor? That'll be no disruption for the students there. That's, you know, that's just like a day job to put that monitor system on. Right, right now we're not running it, so it won't even, you know, we're not running the heat, I hope, this week. Um, so, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, by the time we get the monitor, um, it'll probably be, yeah. Supplies. are so they might be able to come in in the summer but I can't see that being a problem um, in engineering it's going to be you know they're going to be in the back room not in the classrooms yeah so okay so we can vote on this and just get it moving so I will entertain a motion and just to clarify are we entertain a motion on the 19,000 for the monitor and the study that's if that's the motion you want to if make. If that's the motion you want to make, I will. Are you comfortable with that I, motion? I am comfortable okay. with that motion. I'm going to move then that we uh, allocate $19,000 from the ARPA money to fund the new tank monitor and the engineering study for above ground installation. And I'll second that and we'll do it 2 0. Excellent. And then once the engineering study is done and, you know, if it looks like it's going to be a substantial amount of time for one reason or another, we can revisit the spell protection at that point. I, I think if you're, you're right on. What I'll do is once we get that, that plan, I'll, I'll let you, go, you, you guys know so that you can put it on the agenda. We'll come back. Maybe we'll do a joint meeting with the school committee so they can speak up as well. Um, and... Um, and talk about you know what the recommendation is and if it's complicated maybe have the engineer come to present what it, what's going on if it's straight up then you know yeah you won't, won't incur that cost but we'll come to you with the plan and then we'll figure out the cost whatever it is the cost of it and how we move forward with it right? sounds good anyone else have comments or questions All right, so we're up for executive session now, huh? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that the oh. town office building, I mentioned the Memorial Day Parade, but not that we would be closed on Monday for Memorial Day, so wanted okay. to mention that, but yeah. All right, so we're going to enter executive session now. Uh, so the purpose. I think um, somebody may want to make a motion to enter executive session pursuant to Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. Um, and then it's a roll call vote. So. You okay. say Nathaniel's name, and then he says I, and you say your name, and I. Okay. And then reconvene just to close All right. Out. So I'll motion we enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation 
if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. Seconded. Okay, and then so, Nathaniel, you have to, he has to? Yeah, so you, yeah. Nathaniel Waring? Yes, I. Crystal Drake Tremblay, aye. aye. Okay, and we are in executive session. Uh, and then we're gonna come back. Yeah, we'll come back and end the meeting. We're coming back to public se session just to end the, yeah. the public meeting. There's yeah. no more business to be discussed. Yep. All right, thank you everyone.